morning, everyone. My name is Alana, and I'm delighted to be here today to tell you a bit about the research carried out at the Sustainable Thermal Systems Lab here at Georgia Tech. And I'll take a nod to many of my colleagues that came to watch today. Um, specifically, I'm going to tell you a bit about how we are using waste heat and putting it to work. We're using it to heat, to cool, to clean, to conserve, and to preserve. The Biden-Harris administration has set ambitious targets for decarbonization through rapid electrification of various sectors such as the building and the transportation sector. The underlying assumption here is that the electricity generated in the US is green. However, just 21% of the electricity in the US actually comes from renewable sources. So there's a large gap between these decarbonization objectives and the reality if we rapidly transition to electrification. In fact, the primary energy consumption in the US may actually increase as well as the greenhouse gas emissions. 75% of space and water heating uh, in buildings comes from the direct burning of fossil fuels in uh, furnaces or boilers. So the push to decarbonize this heating industry is towards heat pumps. For those of you who don't know, the heat pump relies on the electrically powered vapor compression cycle. You can transfer warm air from outside the building inside the building during the winter to provide heating, and during the summer, you reverse the cycle, transfer warm air from inside the building outside the building to provide cooling. This uh, heat pumping is much more efficient than burning fossil fuels in, in boilers. So it aligns well with the Biden-Harris administration objectives because it's more efficient. However, it doesn't work very well if you don't have a reliable electricity grid, and it definitely doesn't align with these objectives if the electricity is not green. So we're looking at alternative methods that are not reliant on electricity, but reliant on a resource that we already have a lot of, which is waste heat. So let me tell you about absorption technology. Absorption technology can use waste heat in the form of solar heat, geothermal heat, uh, waste heat from buildings, um, or combustion heat. And it can drive an endothermic reaction separating a refrigerant vapor from an adsorbent material. Um, this method is called thermal compression. It replaces the mechanical compressor of a standard vapor compression cycle. To regenerate the cycle, you recombine the two separated materials and you release heat. It's an exothermic reaction. In this way, absorption technology can provide heating and cooling through waste heat. This is actually a game-changing method because if we don't have reliable electricity, we can use this. Um, buildings in the US actually waste 33% of their energy use through uh, waste heat from exhaust and effluents. This waste heat could actually be used to heat and cool the building instead in a much more circular economy. Um, absorption technology can also be used to tackle another emerging problem in the US, which is energy storage. As we push to integrate more renewables onto the grid, um, there's a large mismatch between the supply of, for example, solar and wind energy and the demand of, for example, building, heating, and cooling. Because absorption is um, fundamentally just the separation and then the recombination of two materials, we can use it to time shift, time shift supply. So we separate the materials when we do have a lot of renewables on the grid, and we can recombine them when we don't have the renewables on the grid to provide this heating and cooling um, and essentially provide thermal energy storage. Absorption technology can also be used to provide coal storage. So, for example, in developing countries, when the electricity grid is either unreliable or, in fact, non-existent, we can use burning of biomass, which farmers readily availably have, to provide cooling. So, there's a worldwide issue of um, not enough food in these countries, but the issue actually isn't just not enough food. We do have enough food. The issue is that we can't store it, so it just spoils. 12 million tons of food in India is lost each year because there's not enough coal storage. If we use this type of absorption technology to drive a cooling process, we can actually save all this food and provide increased income and improve the livelihood of small-scale farmers in developing countries. We've also investigated absorption technology for water purification. We've shown that we can purify and remove 99% of the contaminants of grey water and 90% of the contaminants of salt water in addition to providing this cooling. So in a combined cycle sort of method. We've also used absorption technology to enhance the drying process. 2% of energy use in the US actually goes towards industrial drying. We've used thermal energy storage to reduce the energy use and reduce the drying time by 20%. So 
in summary, we've used it for a lot of applications, but we have put waste heat to work. We've used it to cool, to clean, to conserve, to preserve, and to provide heating. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and I'll be around after if there's any questions.